Hi everyone, so today we're talking about something a little bit different. We're talking about your job search. So I'm going to be running through this little slide I created for you guys to talk about, you know, your job search as a business analyst. Like how, how are you faring, <laughs> right, out there um, on the job search. And I wanted to give you just a few highlights that I haven't noticed from jobs that have been posted on LinkedIn and on uh, other job boards like Indeed and so on, that there are some common threads throughout these jobs. And I don't know if you've noticed them, so I wanted to share that with you. So one of the first things I wanted to talk about was the different types of business analyst jobs out there, right? So you have your typical technical BA or your functional BA. And these are business analyst jobs that tend to be more directly an IT or software role, right? So you're working directly on software projects and you are helping the development team to understand what to build. And that's very, very popular to find jobs out there for technical BA because there is just so much need for software and so many software projects out there that really do need to have business analysts on the team. So that's the most common types of jobs. Normally the job role is just called business analyst when you look for it in uh, LinkedIn or Indeed or ZipRecruiter or whatever job board that you're looking for. Just typing in business analyst is enough, but sometimes they preface the title with functional business analyst or technical business analyst, just to highlight the fact that you're working in a specifically, you know, software development environment, or you're working on building better software. Then you have process business analysts, and those process business analysts tend to be working on improving workflows, improving just the way things are done with the companies that they're working for. So it's the, the focus of this business analyst is to make sure people are being efficient and that you're not wasting time and, and resources. So reducing waste and optimizing processes and removing processes that are obsolete is really what uh, the process BA focuses on. Now, this could also include an element of technology because nothing is isolated these days. Everything has uh, interconnection, but the, the main reason why they tend to put process in front of the BA role is because they want you to focus on, you know, eliminating waste and improving, opti you know, optimizing and improving efficiency. These roles normally require like, you know, Lean Six Sigma certification and other things that are known to help improve the way that businesses operate. Then you have strategic business analysts, and these are more at the executive level or close to it, where they're looking out across the industry, looking through the life of the business. They're more at a at an executive level, I would say. They're looking at the strategy that's the best for the company to take. And so strategic business analyst jobs are a little bit less common in the job boards because they tend to call them something else like vp of strategy or something like that you know what i mean so they tend to have very fancy titles but if you look at what they're doing a lot of it is just business analysis at a higher level so those are the three now let me jump into an example of the job descriptions that are matching each of these types of business analyst jobs Okay, so here's an example of a technical business analyst job description, and that's the title that they gave it here. So I'm not going to read through all of this, but basically this is a job for a business analyst that will be working very closely with a particular system or systems. And so that is why they're highlighting the term technical in front of the title to make sure that you know that this is not a workflow or a process or just optimizing you know efficiency this is specific to systems and you're going to need to have some technical knowledge for this one so it says collects data from internal and external customers relating to mid to high level complexity systems and reporting issues impacting service delivery writes detailed business functional requirements that means it's a waterfall environment for me. See, they want a, 
requirements document, you know you're working in waterfall. Uh, of the operation and our system changes, ensuring requirements and proposed solutions meet business customer needs, fine. Analyzes, recommends, and implements requirement changes or improvements for clients. That's great. Develop, develops advanced knowledge and considered a resident expert of the Maven platform. Now, it seems that they're working on this particular platform called Maven, which I don't know. I don't know what it is. But um, it says that you develop advanced knowledge and considered to be a, an expert. That means that you don't have to come as an expert. You don't have to say, oh, no, I don't know Maven, so I can't do this job. No, this means that by you doing the job, by you writing the requirements and doing all this stuff, you are going to acquire this knowledge and you will become the expert. And so that's that's what they're telling you. So you don't have to come ready. You, you will get there and be willing to be that expert when you do right implements configuration changes within the maven platform which is fine provides internal and external training on maven platform configurations now i want to stick up in here one of the things i've been doing for my course um offering as you guys know i'm working on my course and there's a lot a lot of things involved with launching a course oh my goodness it's a lot <laughs> but i'm getting there so part of this course offering is i wanted to help my students to understand the job world right and how you actually navigate um all of the options out there to get to, to get the best you know, footing to become a business analyst to start your career. And one of the things I did was I researched hundreds of, of job descriptions of business analysts, and I'm gonna compile that into a report which I'll offer my students so I can give them, you know, very valuable and relevant information to help them actually be successful. So in doing that research, I uncovered very intricate things I didn't even know was was happening one of the things i found was that a lot of the job descriptions have this little blurb about being able to provide training so it's not just about you becoming an expert they want you to turn around and train turn around and share impart the knowledge that you have and you'll be the only person who kind of has that because you conceptualized you came up with this new process or this new uh, feature in the system and you wrote the requirements for it. So you're the most knowledgeable person on it. And so they want you to turn around and train others, right? So this, this being able to provide internal and external training, I found that to be a common thread throughout most of the job descriptions I've read for business analysts. So pay attention to that. And so if you know this, when you go into the job interview, you can speak to some of these things that can make you stand out. And that's some of the things I'll be training about in my course to help, you know, aspiring business analysts understand the uncommon things that people don't pick up on. Uh, when I say uncommon, I mean uncommon skills that are not talked about. People talk a lot about communication skills and organization skills, all that stuff. But it's being able to transfer your knowledge too that people overlook but you shouldn't because that would help you get the edge in the interview okay mentors less experienced peers see that's another part of what i was just saying um knowledge of the software development life cycle at least five years experience as a ba or equivalent responsibilities now if you don't have five years experience this does not disqualify you so still apply if you even have one year experience or two years experience still apply knowledge of mis systems i don't know what that is public health or claims benefit or registry systems helpful so i don't know any of these things but if you were in public health obviously this would be uh, you know an edge for you but don't be disqualified if you don't you can learn experience training clients on technical topics and end user experience so again there you go so in this one job description they mentioned training three times training clients uh internal external training uh there is something about mentor yeah mentors less experienced peers so they're looking for someone who can turn around and help them and they, you know impart the knowledge so if i was going to apply for this job that would be something i would make sure to mention right and i'd probably mention it more than once so this is how you need to read into the job description don't just say oh yeah it looks like i can do this job click apply easy apply you're done 
really look into the job and really understand what you're trying to do. Like I, I showed you guys in that business um, analyst resume template, there's a little blurb that you put at the top of your resume. If you haven't seen that video, please go check it out because I even give you the actual template that you can download. So there's a little blurb that I like to put on the top of my resumes. If I know I'm applying to this job, I would make sure in that blurb, I talk about training. You see what I mean? So these are some of the nuggets of knowledge you'll get, right? There's many more, you know, this is just the top of the surface. I'm just scratching the surface here, but there's many more of those kind of nuggets that you can get when you join the course, when it's ready. So look out for that. Okay, so here is a process business analyst and this one, actually says business analyst process, which is from Disney streaming. So this one is, is an example of how they would, the kinds of stuff they'd want you to do um, as a process business analyst. I'm not going to go through all of these because it's really long and I don't want the video to become too boring, but I'll just read a few. So it says assist with business process creation and optimization projects um, for the business operations group. So normally process, BAs are doing that, right? Optimizing stuff, um, document data flows, work with other business groups in performance analysis and identifying improvement areas, um, you know, improving KPIs, work closely with product managers to ensure seamless integration of software solutions, which is great. Work with data analytics team to ensure reporting for volume efficiency and other relevant KPIs and metrics. Um, establish efficient standards and guidelines, perfect. Um, partner with Disney Streaming Services Enterprise Program Management to effectively complement their efforts, closing gaps with minimal overlap, with a focus on managing projects from a Disney DTC service organization perspective. So basically just collaborate with other teams and making sure everything is working, you know, streamlined. Um, then more, more about partnering with various you know, TWDC business units, blah, blah, blah. So basically, as you can see here, it's a lot of collaboration and optimization, making sure you meet up with KPIs, which are key performance indicators, which are like metrics. Um, for those of you that are new to, to the business world, the rest of you, you know what that means. Um, so basically, it's just that. So there's very little here about documenting and well, there is documentation because it said doc document data flows, but it's not about, you know, requirements gathering and, and documenting for developers, right? It's really about workflow efficiency, organi organization, optimization, stuff like that. And then it says project management of initiatives, including establishing project plan, right? implementation and documentation of business processes across multiple stakeholders translate policies and key decisions to executive memos uh, and process documentation to support a number of functions including customer service legal finance and marketing etc cetera, etc cetera. for this here's the things that they need two to three years in similar roles in technical consumer facing environments with a digital marketing and process focus so this might be important, right? So it seems like if you don't have any experience in customer facing environments, like if you're always in a back office environment, yeah, it might not be great, but that wouldn't, I still wouldn't disqualify myself because of that, right? Um, track record that shows you're ready to excel in meeting the extraordinary challenges of this role. I mean, how, how do you prove track record? You'd have to have stories to tell them about what, when you were in a similar role and what did you do then and how you can, you know, all that can benefit them. So if I see they're looking for track record, I would come prepared in an interview with all my stories, right? Of, of how I did this, something similar to this in the past. Proven experience in process optimization, very important. Um, so all of these things, look, they're giving, they're asking for track record, they're asking you for proven experience. So that means you got to come with your stories, come with your work samples, you know, in whatever. So in this case, if I was trying to prove my experience in process optimization, I probably would go in there with a, a workflow or a, a, like a flow chart diagram of a process that I improved, what it was before and what it was after and how many steps I eliminated, how much waste was stopped and stuff like that. So that's how I prove that that's true, right? Experience with 
Lean Six Sigma, yeah, development and execution of project plans according to project methodologies, great communication skills, strong business aptitude, strong attention to detail, expert knowledge, creatively and collaboratively disruptive. Hmm, interesting. Strong negotiation and issue resolution skills, self-motivated, high energy, tenacity, ability to determine res resource needs and recommend solutions. So another thing I wanted to point out here, which is my students will get this when we do, when they join me for that course, is the soft skills again, keep coming out. I keep finding in addition to uh, what we talked about in the last one, I also found that negotiation skills and being able to recommend solution is a very important one that keeps popping up. Attention to detail as well is a very common thing as well. So you can mention these things in your job, um, in your resume and in your job interview. So here is a strategic business analyst job, but of course they don't call it that. Um, at this level, they call it VP or director or you know executive. They call you something at that level, maybe in a C-suite um, executive job. Because really, if you're a strategic business analyst, you're really not as deep in the weeds. Um, as the rest of us are. <laughs> so there is fewer of these types of business analysts, but they do exist. And if you look at the role, for example, here it says, leading strategic drivers and priorities across both ships, operations and finance departments. The company here is, is shipped, right? Um, establishing a reliable, sustainable operation, operating cadence across operations and finance lead leadership team, prioritizing key projects and management of critical issues, ensure focus of COO on most impactful items, fostering relationships across shipped, partnering to drive initiatives across shipped, engaging with key internal and external stakeholders, representing the organization in a clear and compelling way, leading strategic facilitation, routine development. So as you see, there's a lot of business analyst tasks going on here. You want to have partnership. You want to interact with your stakeholders. You want to um, facilitate, um, you know, these kind of sessions. So uh, there is a lot of leadership, but it's leadership you know, with business analysis involved, right? So this is, in my opinion, a strategic business analyst job. If you look at what it requires as a key competence, it's strong ability to demonstrate strategic planning, work in a fast-paced, highly interactive environment, build connections. And you know, for business analysts, we have to do lots of relationship building. So that's kind of the same thing, strategic thinker, which, you know, as business analysts, we are analytical thinkers. And at this level, you're doing analytical at a strategic level, right? Curiosity about operations. You know, we're always doing process improvement and stuff like that. Um, interpersonal skills, you know, credible, collaborative, operationalized strategies across key um, stakeholder groups, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, for this, it's a college degree with 10 plus years of experience working knowledge of tech startups, um, experience managing large and complex projects, et cetera, et cetera. So this is an example, in my opinion, of a strategic business analyst job, which they'll never call it business analyst. Well, not, I wouldn't say never, but it's highly unlikely, right? They always call it something like this. Um, so those are my three examples of the three types of business analyst jobs out there. Of course, most of us are going to be between the functional and the process BA until we take that next level when we get more seasoned in our career to get to the VP level. So as I'm going through these hundreds of job applications, like I was saying earlier, I did notice some, some trends and I call them special skills. These are the uncommon things that we don't really think about, but if I've noticed that they they are a recurring thread throughout the job descriptions I've gone through. So formulating recommendations is one where employers are looking for BAs who can come up 
with suggestions for improvements. They want fresh ideas and someone who can think through a problem. So they're looking for you to be the one to raise your hand and say, hey, I, how about this? Here's an idea I have. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be even the right solution, but they want someone to kind of be thinking like that and come up with the ideas. The other thing that they want is collaboration. They want employees are looking for BAs who can facilitate good collaboration. Collaboration sometimes is confused from just having communication skills and, you know, relationship building, but really it's about bringing different teams together. They want someone who can be that glue that pulls the teams together who would not otherwise have a reason to be meeting, right? To be coming together. And so that's the collaboration that they're looking for. Multitask is another one. So this one is, boy, this is good and bad. So employers want BAs who can handle multiple projects at once which is great for the employer, not so good for the BA, right? Because they're really looking for someone that they can just pile on a bunch of stuff on and see how much of it you can handle and juggle at the same time. So they're trying to get the most out of you. So you could be doing two or three people's jobs. Um, and But that's just the world we're in. Things are moving so fast that you don't have the luxury of just working on one thing and one thing only. You have to like manage everything, right? So there, this multitasking is coming up more and more. So some of the top skills I've found throughout my research, and there's a lot more of this I'm going to share with the people who are going to be a part of my course. I actually have um, like a, a report that I'm going to be giving them that actually highlights in more detail some of these things. But some of the top skills I've found are, of course, documentation skills. They keep talking about, you know, being able to write either business requirements document or write user stories or um, just document models and data flows, not really data flow, but like workflows. So I've seen a lot of documentation come up. There's a obviously a heavy emphasis also on requirement solicitation, being able to garner and get, draw out the real business requirements. There's strong, strong emphasis on communication skills. Um, also, business analytics comes up a lot. Even though we know that business analysis and business analytics are two different things, the employers are not really making the distinction. And so they're asking for <laughs> analytics, like business analytics, like data analytics in their business analyst job description. So just something to to be aware of there. Also report building, this tends to go hand in hand with the ones that are asking for business analytics. They want you to be able to create reports that give insights to them to make decisions off of, um, dashboards and stuff like that. There's also heavy emphasis on problem solving. They also want BAs who have, you know, stakeholder management skills, being able to hold stakeholder interviews, you know, manage the customers, the staff, and understand what the expectations are and make sure that you can meet the expectations, but not at the, at the detriment of anything else. So being able to manage all of that is important. Project management skills comes up a lot as well. So they want you to manage these different, you know, projects. Um, and it goes back to the multitasking thing that we talked about before. Detail oriented comes up a whole lot. So they're looking for people who are paying attention to detail and being able to, you know, fetter out little details that could cause the projects to go awry or, you know, make it even go faster. And also innovation. So they want people who are creative, innovative, you know, thinking outside of the box and things like that. So those are some of the top skills that I've uncovered as I'm looking through job descriptions for business analysts. So that's just the tip of the iceberg, folks. That's just scratching the surface. Um, for those who will be a part of my course, um, I will be giving out much more in-depth information and detail and basically help you navigate how these job descriptions are written and what you should be looking out for and give you the, the tricks and tips that you can look at the job description and know exactly how you should strategize that interview should you be called and how to get to that interview. Uh, obviously I can't guarantee that you'll get an interview, but I can definitely give you some tricks and some tips and just things to look out for 
that would help you be more successful so this is just uh the plain vanilla version and uh the people in the course will get the full <laughs> there's way more <laughs> i'm laughing because it's so exciting for me it's really exciting to do this kind of research there's way more that you can uncover um about job descriptions that can help you be successful and i'm i'm delighted i can't wait i can't wait to share this with the people who are going to be a part of my course so guys if you haven't signed up and joined the waiting list yet please go to my website and do that um so you can be notified when the course is launched So there you have it, guys. Those are the tips I wanted to share with you in terms of the business analyst job description. And um, yeah, I really wish you guys good luck as you go out there looking for your jobs. I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe, please like, please check out the other videos. Also go to my website, carolise.com and check out my free courses and other materials up on carolise.com. So I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.